Hello and welcome to another Rio tutorial video. Today we are going to use the Rio Planner to program the Scorpion robot. So I'm assuming that you might or may not have customized your Scorpion robot, but it doesn't really matter. You can use your own types of motion files because as long as, as it can interact with the surroundings and I mean cooperate with the sensors, then it's okay. And um, before going to the program, I'll say that I won't be covering the motion for this robot because it's fairly simple. If you have claws, you just move it around. If you have pincers, it's just open and close. And the tail, well, the only thing about tail is that make sure that it doesn't go down too quickly because it might knock on the head module. And if it's done too many times, the head module might spoil. And of course, remember to change the wheels to wheel mode if you do use the wheels. Okay, so now let's go to the real planner and start programming the robot. Okay, so here we are with the real planner. So now I'm going to write a new program for the Scorpion. So, as you saw just now, the Scorpion has a lot of sensors, so we are practically going to use all of them here. But I think you can try to use all of them by yourself because I think I'll just go through the important points and you can experiment by yourself. Okay. So as always, you need to start with the start block. The start block is here. So immediately after that, we're going to add in the sensors because all the actions of the Scorpion depends on the sensors. I'll start with the ultrasonic sensor first. So I think I'm going to use the ultrasonic sensor first because I feel that it's the most interesting because the ultrasonic sensor is located at the end of the stinger, the tail of the scorpion. So this one is one of the more unique traits of this scorpion robot. So here's the ultrasonic sensor. Now remember that you have to have to change the distance for the sensor to read. And also remember that this is measured in millimeters. And in the display sense, and, and in the sensor display on the real controller is displayed in centimeters. So you remember to convert the units. So I'm going to use 20 centimeters. So here I'm going to use 200 millimeters, which is equal to 20. Then immediately after that, I'm going to add a motion file. This is a motion file for tail stinging. So less than sting. Target, and then look. Oh, this is already talked before. So I'm going to look this first. Then I'm going to upload this to the reload robot and we'll see what will happen. Okay, so now that the program is already downloaded, I'll demonstrate what we'll do. So the other side is sensing, and since there's nothing, it won't do anything. You'll just keep on sensing, sensing, as you can see on the indicator. When you see the red, you see the red blink, it means that it's sensing, and the blue means it's not. So it's rapidly switching so that it's sensing and then not up. So it's just repeating. So once you see something, it will attack. So that's the whole program. And one thing you need to make sure is that when it attacks, it goes back to the original position. Because let's say if it's down a little bit, because right now I'm programming to be very sensitive. So if it's only down a little bit, it will attack because it senses the head of the robot. Okay. So maybe there are some times that. Since it's attacking once it moves back, it's actually vibrating a bit. And when it's vibrating, actually, it may decrease the distance between the head and itself. So maybe you can add a delay after that to make sure that it doesn't vibrate when it's sensing. So let's see one more time. Let's see something attack. Okay. So now we're gonna add the function of another sensor into the program. So just now you just saw what our program could do. So now we can just add in the different types of sensors and incorporate the different type of actions with the sensor and then the whole program complete. So remember that you need to add it, add it after the output that does not have a motion after, after it. That is, let's say if it's less than, it will sting. So if it's greater than, it will move on to check the other sensors. So I delete this loop. Then the next one to check is the infrared sensor. Then we'll do a specific motion. And after that, it will check the mic sensor and so on. So I've already written the program so that it'll be faster. Like this. Now, this is the whole program. A bit. As you can see, all the four sensors are here. Now remember that it doesn't always have to be less than something and then the motion. Sometimes it can be greater than and then the motion. For example, for the mic sensor, if the sound is greater than, which is louder than a certain level, it will do the action rather than if it's more, it is softer than a certain value. So if it's softer, if it's softer than then it will keep on moving when there's no sound. 
and they will be actually very hard to control the robot. Okay? And also remember to, to input the appropriate readings or values. You can always check the readings on the sensors through the real controller to make sure that you get the correct readings. And then you can make sure that it doesn't react to the wrong values. Okay? So this is the whole this is the whole program for it. And you can see that I've already added the delay after the sting, the stinging motion, so that you can count, so that you can solve the problem of vibration. Okay. Now I'm going to download the program again, and then we can see what happens. So now I've already downloaded the program to the Scorpion robot. So now all the sensors are functional, so you can see what they can do. For the mic sensor, I did it as if there's a very loud sound, it will move backwards. So now I clap my hands. It move backwards. So something to note about the mic sensor is that the mic sensor senses sound and sound is a form of vibration. So let's say if I pick it up and then I put it down to the table. Because just now when I put it down on the table, there's actually a vibration from the table. So it actually responded to it. So when you're using a mic sensor, you need to make sure that it's careful. And one of the problems is that I want to demonstrate here is that because the head is actually going to touch the ground when I put it down. So when you design your robot, you need to make sure of this point. And also this just this. And also behind I have an infrared sensor. When I sense something, the robot will turn around. So as if it's a if an enemy attacks it from behind, it will react. Okay. Of course, there's not much to talk about the ultrasonic and the infrared sensor except on how it functions. Let's say I block one side of the ultrasonic sensor. You can see, even though my hand is directly in front of it, it won't respond. So this is actually how the ultrasonic sensor works. The ultrasonic sensor has two eyes because one eye works to emit waves. Then when the waves hit something, it will reflect back and then the other eye will sense it. So it's actually how a bat moves around the night because the bat is actually half blind. So it uses ultrasonic sound to sense things. So since I'm blocking out the eyes, the ultrasonic will not function this, this way. So this is just to note that when you are designing a robot, make sure the ultrasonic sensor is not blocked, right? So now that it's out, there's no more problem. Now one more thing to note is that you realize that the blinking of the LED is actually slower in this program than the previous one. Because as, as the sequence of the program gets longer, the robot needs to check more and more sensors at a time. So it actually checks them one by one. So let's say ultrasonic first and then infrared and then the IR then the mic. So it needs to take turns to check. So if your program gets longer and longer, the checking of the sequences will get slower and slower. So this is why it blinks slower. So this is something that you might need to take you might need to take note of because if your program is too long, your robot might be might interact slower. And that's all for today. So what I want to tell you guys is try to utilize the sensors in different ways because the application of sensors is actually a very special thing because other than just robots that do need that perform linear tasks, but I think sensors you can make the robot perform more interactive, more interactively. And also try to use the sensors in different ways. For example, for the mic sensor, it doesn't only have to react when there's a when there's a very loud sound. Maybe it can do something when it's loud and then do something special when there's no sound at all or even utilize the ultrasonic and the infrared sensors like let us say you can put it in your Utan ro orangutan robot so let's say one, you can fix an ultrasonic sensor at the back of the head so when it falls down you can sense the ground and you will know that it's toppled you can use it in special ways like that or even here's a challenge that you can try make a robot that as it approaches a wall it gets slower and slower and then gradually stops okay this is one of the uses of the sensors and many many others you can try to challenge yourself and use the sensors because a robot without sensors is practically just a machine. Okay? Now that's all for today. Thank you.